Hello again, everyone. Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube NFL prediction segment, I'm going to be giving you my picks and analysis for week 10 of the 2016 NFL season. Well, the first game I'm going to talk about is, okay, I'm going to take Baltimore at home over the Cleveland Browns. Baltimore, they had a very good win last week. They had lost a number of consecutive games. They had defeated Pittsburgh. Their uh, total defense is not bad, actually. They're number three in total defense, allowing about nine, and they're also allowing about 19 points per game. The Ravenous defense may not be there anymore, but it's still, uh, it's coming close to, they've had defenses perform better than I thought it would this season. And as far as the Cleveland Browns go, I mean, their misery just keeps continuing. They're like a dilapidated building that just keeps falling apart week after week, and really, they, uh, Cleveland is now 1-23 in, in their last 24, uh, including the preseason and dating back to last season. And really, I mean, they're allowing about 30 points per game right now. The one good thing about Cleveland right now, Christian uh, Kirksey is one of the leaders and tackles in the NFL with 81. They may have to do a lot in this game. I'm going to take Baltimore at home in this one. Now, next game, I'm going to take Green Bay on the road to defeat the Tennessee Titans. Green Bay has not lost three consecutive games in some time. They're in danger of doing so in this game. They are number one in rushing yards against uh, average per game, 75.8. Tennessee Titans, though, are number three in the NFL in rushing yards per game at about 144. DeMarco Murray's having a sensational season. And right now, uh, the Tennessee Titans, they're in virtually every game they play. They just lost. The last two games were very tight games. They were tough losses. They could have gone either way. I wouldn't be flabbergasted or be in a state of shock if they pull this one out. They are at home in this one. But Green Bay, I just think, is a little bit more talented. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to bounce back and, and really have a good game. And, I mean, he played well anyway, and I know against Atlanta. Not sure exactly how he did last week, but it wasn't whatever it was. It obviously wasn't enough for the team to prevail, but I think he'll play well enough for the team to win this week. I like Green Bay on the road. Now, the next game, I'm going to take the Washington Redskins at home against the Minnesota Vikings. Well, the Washington Redskins, I mean, they uh, they had a slow start at the season, but they bounced back considerably. They're 4-1-1 one, and one in their last six games. They're also, I mean, Kirk Cousins, their quarterback, is having a very good season. He's, his completion percentage is 67. He's taking right where he left off last season. They're number seven in total offense. Minnesota's starting to falter. They've lost three consecutive games. They were flourishing at the beginning of the season. Uh, they looked, There were people that were talking about them maybe going to the Super Bowl. But as you know, often after five games, it could be very early to speculate on that. I might have even thought one of the people that thought they were going to go to the Super Bowl. But right now, I think the loss of Adrian Peterson is obviously catching up with them. They're at number 32 in total offense. And they're only averaging about 73 yards per game on the ground. That obviously will be to your detriment, and it catches up with you at some point. And anyway, I'm going to take Washington to win at home. Now, the next game, I'm going to take Tampa Bay at home to win this one over the Chicago Bears. Now, they may get Doug Martin back. Uh, I believe it's a running back. They may get him back in this game coming up. Wide receiver Mike Evans has really surreptitiously uh, become one of the better receivers in the NFL. Right now, currently, he's number five in receiving yards with 745. Tampa Bay, though, is 0-4 at home this season. Interestingly enough, Chicago is 0-4 on the road, so something it will likely give unless they wind up in a tie, which I don't think is going to happen. Quarterback Jay Cutler was very efficient last week, did not have an interception, but can he replicate what he did last week? This week, that game was on the, uh, the last time the Bears played. It was at home against the Vikings. It will be on the road in this game. Can Chicago win two in a row? I just don't see it happening right now. I think Tampa Bay is due to win at home, and I like the Bucks to win at home. Now, the next game. 
I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs to win on the road against the Carolina Panthers. Kansas City, they are uh, six and two right now. They have won four consecutive games. In, in that four-game winning streak, they've only given up about 15 points per game on average. They are plus 13 in turnover differential. Carolina, on the other hand, minus six in turnover differential. Kansas City's defense has been playing lights out. They have playmakers on that team. However, Carolina, they have won two in a row, but they barely got by the Rams last week, and I just don't see how they're going to beat Kansas City. Now, Carolina has 24 defensive sacks. That is one thing going for them, and Cam Newton was not bad last week, but I mean, when you only win like 13 to 10 against the Rams, it's a little dubious for me to see them picking them to beat Kansas City. Been wrong before, but I don't think on this one I will be. I like the Kansas City Chiefs to win this one on the road. Now the next game, I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons to win on the road over the Philadelphia Eagles. Atlanta right now, I mean, their offense saying it's on a rampage would be a vast understatement. They have averaged about 34 points per game. Quarterback Matt Ryan is number two in uh, passing. Uh, I'm sorry, quarterback. Um, the, the Atlanta Falcons are number two in passing yards per game. I believe Matt Ryan actually is number one in passing yards per game. Philadelphia is starting to plummet. They got off to a very hot start and. Really seemed like after they trounced Pittsburgh, they've just been kind of a downward spiral. They've dropped four of five. However, they are number six in pass defense as far as passing yards allowed per game, about 218. So that, that is the one. There'll be a key battle between those cornerbacks, that pass defense against Atlanta's uh, very strong passing offense. I think the passing offense wins out in this one, and I do like Atlanta to win on the road. Now the next game, well, I'm going to take the Jets, New York Jets, to win at home over the L.A. Rams. The Jets, in the last few games, they have been respectable. I know they lost the last one. It was a tough one on the road against Miami. They won the two previous games. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick feels a little rejuvenated and revitalized. He is playing a little bit better over this time. I think now he feels that this is his team. Geno Smith is out for the year, and I think that has helped giving him some swagger and some confidence. Now, the Jets are number four in run defense in terms of rushing yards allowed per game at 81. Now, the Rams, though, their running attack has really not been great. Running back Todd Gurley has not had a 100-yard game this season. I think he was held to like 48 yards rushing last week, or it was a very low number, whatever it was. They have lost four consecutive games. They are reeling right now. They're only averaging about 16 points per game, and they've only scored 20 points in the last two. I just like the way the Jets are playing in recent time compared to the Rams, and they are at home. So I'll take the New York Jets to win this one at home. Next game. I'm going to take the Denver Broncos to win on the road over the Saints. I mean, Denver right now, they have 28 defensive sacks. It's, they're really, uh, they're one of the best in the league as far as sacking the quarterback. Von Miller, number one in sacks right now at nine and a half. And uh, they also, as far as their, their passing yards uh, per game, as far as what they've allowed, in, as far as their pass defense, passing yards allowed per game, number one in the NFL right now, which makes this intriguing battle because, of course, New Orleans has their formidable offense with Drew Brees, the ageless wonder, showing no signs of deterioration with age. He uh, Saints are number one in passing yards per game, and they're, they're averaging about 30 points per game. They have played very well recently. They've won four or five. I understand they're at home. They, this should be a tight game. But I still, I mean, right now, as far as Denver, I see them bouncing back after that loss they had to Oakland last week. I think the defense can't play like that two consecutive weeks. They'll be much better, be enough to beat the Saints uh, on the road. So I like Denver on the road to win against the Saints. Next game, I want to take the Houston Texans on the road to defeat the Jacksonville Jaguars. No J.J. Watt. I think, hopefully, no problem. 
Uh, they are 5-3. and three. They're leading the AFC South Division right now. And Houston, despite being 0-3 on the road, I look for them to break out and get their first home win of the season. They have something in common with Jacksonville bes uh, in, besides being in the same division. They both have three defensive interceptions. And they really, I would expect a fairly high completion percentage by both teams in this game. Jacksonville... They're minus 12 in turnover differential. Uh, they're also, they've lost uh, the, their last three games. They are reeling right now. The one good Brighton spot for Jacksonville last week, they did run for 205 yards. If they can duplicate that this week against the Texans being at home, they do have a shot to win. But I think right now I just like Houston uh, playing a little bit better than Jacksonville. So I'm going to take Houston to win on the road. Next game, I'm going to take the San Diego Chargers to win at home over the Miami Dolphins. San Diego averaging about 30 points per game with quarterback Phillip Rivers, especially at home, you always got a chance. He's one of those quarterbacks, those few elite ones that could break out for like 400 yards plus passing on any given, uh, any given game. Casey Hayward is shown to be a great playmaker uh, for that team. He's tied for the NFL lead in interceptions with five. Uh, played very well last week, and really in, in this particular game, I like San Diego being at home. They are three and one at home. Miami is zero and three on the road. However, they have won three consecutive games. They have played very well lately. And the running back Jay, I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, uh, Ajahi, he has played exceptional the last three games. He's rushed for over 500 yards. He ran for over 100 last week. And they have, and also their kick returning uh, guy, uh, one of their kick returning people, uh, Kenyon uh, Drake, has shown a lot of promise this season. So that being said, though San Diego being at home with their offense, the fact that Miami has struggled on the road, I do like the Chargers to win at home. Next game. I like the Pittsburgh Steelers to win at home over the Dallas Cowboys. Pittsburgh, three and one at home. They lost to Baltimore last week on the road. Ben Roethlisberger will likely be in a better condition uh, this week. Being at home, they only have 11 defensive sacks, but you don't want to play a Pittsburgh team that is coming off the loss, and especially when they are at home. We know what happened that last time when Pittsburgh was trounced by Philadelphia, and they came at home. They were at home with a vengeance against the team that they played the next week, and they came out and I believe battered them. So. I kind of see the same thing. Well, I don't really see them battering Dallas because Dallas has played very well, of course. They could have easily been 8-0 this season because in week one, they only lost by one point to the New York Giants. 7-1 and one right now, leading the NFC East. Uh, they're averaging about 28 points per game right now. But they only have four defensive interceptions. So if they, it's going to be key if they could, they're probably going to need one interception, at least in this game, to, to win this game. And it may be tough considering they've struggled in that department. But they've also, at the same time, they have just been playing so well collectively as a team. Their running back, Ezekiel Elliott, and quarterback, Dak Prescott. Uh, they have just played really phenomenal level, but I think their winning streak does come to an end this week. They're going to go against an experienced Pittsburgh quarterback. Being at Pittsburgh, coming off the loss uh, last week, I think they win this game, and I like Pittsburgh to win at home in a close one. Now, I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals at home to defeat the San Francisco 49ers. Arizona uh, nine defensive interceptions, one of the best in the league at that department. They're about they're mediocre at home this season. Two, two, and one. Running back David Johnson ran amok in the last battle against San Francisco. He ran for 157 yards against the 49ers last time they played him. 49ers are worst in the NFL in rushing, in as far as rushing yards allowed per game at 193 and I think David Johnson gets over 100 in this game uh, for the Cardinals. 49ers are 0-3 on the road this season. They've lost seven consecutive games. They're reeling. I like Arizona to win this one at home. Next game. Well, this should be a good battle. Uh, I'm going to take New England 
at home over the Seattle Seahawks, New England. I mean, you have arrested Tom Brady in this game. Uh, New England actually, they're, right now, uh, their scoring defense is actually better than Seattle's. Who would have thought that at this juncture of the season that would happen? But New England's allowing 16.5 points per game. Seattle, 16.8. And really, uh, New England, I mean, they have won four consecutive games. I think what's going to be tough in this game, not just the fact New England's at home, but that whoever's going to be on run, whoever's going to defend or cover Rob Gronkowski in this game, I think that will be tough matchup. I think Rob Gronkowski wins it. I do like, despite Seattle and their formidable defense, I do like... Um, New England to win this one at home. They're a very hot team, and I think they'll keep it going in this one. So I'm going to take the Patriots at home to beat Seattle. So last but not least, I'm going to take the New York Giants at home to defeat the Cincinnati Bengals. If you told me about this game five, six weeks ago, I would have picked really uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. But the Giants have played very well in recent weeks. They have won three consecutive games. They are 3-1 and one at home. Landon Collins on defense looked very good for the team uh, last week. I think right now, I mean, when I look back, I, I think when, when you had uh, Odell Beckham earlier this season, when he had a little meltdown in the game on the field or what have you, you know, looking back in retrospect, that could have been a very positive thing for, for him because what it did was I think he came to the realization of how bad whatever emotional turmoil is going through personal issues were impacting him on the field. And he became more cognizant of it. And he decided that he was going to turn things around and not let that impact him on the field. And ever since then, the Giants have been playing much better. In Cincinnati, 1-3 and three on the road. They're 1-2-1 one, and one in their last four games. I mean, Cincinnati is really struggling. I would not have thought they would have been where they were at at this juncture at the beginning of the season. No way. They Some teams are superseding expectations. The Bengals, unfortunately, are underachieving. And they only have one road win this season, and that was against the Jets in week one by one point, as many of you may remember. Anyway, I'm going to take the, the Giants to keep it going and keep keep the win streak going and win at home over the over the Bengals. Well, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube NFL prediction segment for my 2016 Week 10 NFL picks and analysis. And stay tuned uh, the next time. Well, I'll be probably doing some individual game picks uh, for Week 10 before the, but next week I'll be giving you, of course my uh, week 11 uh, 2016 NFL picks and analysis. And until next time, people, Edwin Learns saying stay well.